you're welcome. On this episode of One and One, we have two guests, two outstanding photographers whose legends are already being told. In the first part, Kelechi Amadiobi tells us of his journey to photography away from his first degree, which is law. Enjoy. For over two decades, our guest today, Kelechi Amadiobi, has remained at the forefront of photography in Nigeria. He has worked with celebrities, including presidents of Nigeria, both past and present. He first qualified as a lawyer before settling to full-time art. He talks to us today about his work and the future of photography. Thank you very much for coming on the program. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Let's talk about photography. How is it in this country today? Photography is on a meteoric rise in terms of relevance right now. We're in a digital age and there is an insatiable appetite for imagery right now. And I would say um, it's a stroke of luck to be born at this time as an image maker because um, then you become very relevant. But one would worry that with the advent of so much digitalization, we have smartphones that are almost as crystal as that. Isn't that taken away a bit from the work that you do? When everyone, just like in journalism, where you have citizen journalists, you know how everybody says, I'm a photographer. Oh, well, it's interesting. What has happened is that because everybody has a smartphone with a reasonably powerful camera on it, people then appreciate what you do as a photographer. People then understand that it is not the camera that takes the picture, it is the mind of the photographer. It's the pho People start to appreciate the photography eye more because everybody then has a good camera with them, you see. So now, when you say you're a photographer, a professional photographer, people understand that there are other skills apart from the equipment. True. True. <laughs> that, that's, I mean, I didn't look at it that way, but now that you've said it, I'm sure a lot of persons will say, okay, when I say I'm a photographer, it doesn't mean I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at modeling. It's part of uh, yes. what you do. You deal with models and, you know, get them to look good on camera and all of that. But after that life, do, should they be having backups? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm one of those people that... Um, don't believe in plan B. You know, I just had one plan. I had one goal to be an artist. And um, yes, I studied law. I mean, it's a long story, but to cut a long story short, in those days when we grew up, um, our parents always wanted us to study certain courses, law, medicine, and my family wasn't any different. Yes, yes, your and, you came from a family of lawyers. Yes, That's one of the things I saw yeah, when I was reading about yes, you. Yes, yeah. you know, my father was a high court judge. We have four lawyers in the house, you know, and doctors also, you know, it's a basic requirement in my house. But then I've always had a passion for the arts and I decided to follow my passion. And um, you think this caused some sort of upheaval? Oh, at well, home? you know, I had a turning point when I was in university. I, I, I came across a book called The Spirit of Apollo, which is like, you know, the Apollo um, the space, space shuttle. Oh, okay. you know, the, idea, the idea of having a dream, you know, to put a man on the moon. And that was one of those self help books. And it, it, I came to Crossroads and it sort of clarified, you know, all my conflicts. I made a decision that this is something I know I'm really good at in comparison to other regular people. And uh, this is what I would like to do for the rest of my life if there was no possibility of failure. So if you take fear away, then it becomes very clear. But not many models or photographers are as, you know, as persistent and, I mean, one-track minded about growing their career in a particular line. Yes. There are those, Naomi Campbell, we still know her as a model, but not so many are able to sustain the publicity and the, you know, the notoriety that's yes. needed to make a revenue. So to such people, what would you say? Well, the truth is that you need to evolve 
even photography, even art. I've, I've, my career has always been evolving. I started as a painter. I first started as a watercolor artist, and then I moved to oil. From oil, I moved to photography. From photography, I, I beca became a publisher. From becoming a publisher, I'm now doing cinematography a little bit. You know, I mean, it it keeps evolving. You cannot stay in one place. It's a creative world. People's tests change. The economy changes, and things shift, the economy shifts. So if you're a model, first of all, being a model is a transient thing. It's got to do with what people are looking for at a particular time. So if you're a young model, then it is your youth that matters. Then you need to transit into an older model, maybe. Do you want to become an actor? Maybe. Do you want to become a TV presenter? You know, there are so many Consistently ways. Consistently refining Some your Some people then build a very strong brand and then start to sell other things under the name of that brand. So there are so many ways, but you cannot stay in one place because the inevitable thing that must happen is change. And if you stay in one place relative to others, maybe you're moving backwards. Okay, I was going to ask you something else, but something you said about also delving into other areas. You were a publisher, or yes. you are still a publisher to a yeah, certain you know, degree. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mania was a magazine I started publishing um, because I needed an outlet to express my fashion photography world. And at the same time, I also realized that the continent of Africa was in their need of rebranding and you need to put your money where your mouth is and we decided to start putting up a magazine, a women's fashion magazine that would provide an avenue for all the talents, writers, stylists, designers, fashion um, designers and makeup artists to showcase their work and speak to the rising fashion you know, world. Um, and expose that to the rest of the world. It worked very well, you know. So uh, is it still in publication? Well, we had to stop. Um, and now we're about to start something else, another publication, which you would get we'll to hear. look forward about. to it. Yes. Okay, you don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Yes. It should be nice to get an yes. idea of what yes. it's about. Well, it's, 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 it's a, a more global um, sort of publication. I have partners on it. It will be revealed in time. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for it and get you on it. But uh, let's look at some of the discoveries. Um, like Ola Jumoke, um, we heard of your work with Bukola. Where is she now? First, first off, tell us how that happened. Well, the truth is this. Every model that you see um, was sort of discovered by somebody. Somebody needed to look at them and say, oh, like Oluchi, they said, oh, look at this tall girl. Why don't you go and um, compete for, you know, the face of Africa? You know, or the way T.Y. Bello discovered Oluji uh, yeah. just by chance. But this also happened while I was shooting, um, what yeah, is Jidenna. his name, Jidenna, and then I saw this girl on the road. And I thought, wow, you know, what an interesting, and, you know, I gave her my number. Eventually she came, took a picture, and people fell in love with her picture. And, well, um, instantly she started, she, she, she walked on the runway for, um, um, you know, Lagos Fashion Week, you know, that year, and uh, she, she's, she's, she's a practicing model now, you know. But the truth is that it, 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 what we do affords us the opportunity, you know, to look and see uh, things in a different way that other people may not. And then by the time we put it together, people then start to see value. What you, you yes, saw yes. in the raw yes, and translated yes. it's, for It's a privilege too. that we have. It's one of those things where you can take two things and put them together and you create a new thing. You know, you take a, 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 a bread seller and put mm -hmm. her in fashion outfit, she <laughs> becomes a model. You, you yeah. know, you take, so it becomes, it's one of those beautiful things that but could that, happen. I guess yeah, that's what keeps you going most <laughs> of the time. Well, let's, yes. let's look at the transcend nature of fame when it comes to, you know, the stars, models, you know, all the noise come. The case of Olajim, okay, somebody was asking the other day, where is she? What is happening? to her she suddenly went quiet what about Bukola what is it is it that it has something to do with the pressure of uh, the fame or the need to stay at a particular level and they well, couldn't sustain it well the truth is that everything depends on the individual I mean you know opportunities may come but the question is 
who are you becoming and what have you decided to do with it you know um so uh, you look at it yes fame you know but fame is a function of what you have done right it can come suddenly but how do you sustain it you understand so it all depends it's a lot of work it doesn't just you know, sustain itself. Let's look at your work with celebrities. <laughs> you've been work, you've been in the spotlight a whole long time. Yes. Um, you've worked with presidents. Tell us a bit about some of the people you've worked with. Oh, well, I mean, you know, I've always, my whole career, you know, for the past I don't know, 20 to 30 years has been about telling the story of the continent of Africa. But it's to tell the other side of the story, the triumphant, the, the achievements. You see, I do believe that perception is reality. It is how we perceive ourselves that determines how we act. And at the beginning of that department are image makers. And I always tell people, I mean, I've worked with so many. I mean, look, these days I do a lot of corporate work, so I'm shooting all the billionaires. You know, I'm shooting, uh, sometimes you find yourself shooting an election poster, you know, of a uh, president, you know, and things like that. Um, so at the end of the day, for me, it's about telling that story on a daily basis. I've been shooting Nigerian music and entertainment industry from the actors to the actresses, you name them. I mean, from Genevieve to Amotala to you know, the older ones to the new R &D. ones. So I saw some of them on yes. your website. Just a quick uh, thought about yes. the experience, this experience, what are the lessons that you took away, that you continuously seem to take away when you interact with these people? Well, I've always, a lot of times you look at it and you look at how, how did these people achieve what they've achieved and you find that there's a thread that runs along the line of each of these people about dedication is about consistency is about focus you know and all i'm interested in is how do we get our people to understand that they are this great and that they should just understand that they're that way and continue and find what we need to contribute to the world recently Donald Trump banned in you know, Nigeria and people are like, look at the demographics of Nigerians in the United States. They are the most well-educated, they are the most accomplished. Now, that is the story that we need to tell. Our people need to understand that we are people of excellence. Indeed we are. So what do we expect from you um, in the coming days? You have a big thing in the net, but what are the things? Who are you working with currently? Oh, well, you know, the next thing I'm, I'm about to do is to unbundle all the knowledge and let the, let, let the younger ones and, um, understand how we got where we are and how to get there, you know? So for me, um, in the next few years, I'm going to be teaching a lot and let people understand how I see and I'm able to make all these images. People, are, the people, are, very, people are very curious about it. So I'm going to let all the secrets out. Oh, I want to be in the class <laughs> as well. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on the program yeah, today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Same here. I trust you enjoyed our chat with Kelechi. Next up is Dayo Adedayo, the man who has chronicled Nigeria in a very unique way, documenting our landmarks in photographs. I'm positive you will have a good time. Our guest on the program is Dayo Adedayo, a British-trained Nigerian photographer, cultural anthropologist, and an author. He published his first book titled Nigeria, a pictorial informative compendium on Nigeria in 2010. A centenary edition of Monopoly Nigeria by Best Man Games, released into the market in 2014, had 98% of pictures from Adedayo's archives. So also, uh, all the pictures on display are the presidential wing of the Namdi Aizikiwe International Airport, Abuja. This Nigerian was a member of the Nigeria Board on Technical Education, charged in 2012 to look into setting up photography as a course in Nigerian polytechnics. Interestingly, all the watermarked images on the Nigerian e-passport is his handiwork. 
He is also an external examiner at Alchi Polytechnic, among many other responsibilities. He graces us with his presence for an interview in our studios. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Have you always known you wanted to be a photographer? You are extremely good at it. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, it's not something I knew I would do. Okay. I was trained as an agricultural, uh, uh, what is it, extension worker. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, but I've been in photography from the age of eighteen. And uh, what happened? Life. When you are, when it rains, you look at the rainbow. And at the end of the day, it's something I find myself, something I'm at peace with myself. But it all boils down to being a shy person. Oh, you don't <laughs> look shy. <laughs> uh, you know, I love to be behind the camera. So that takes away me yeah. having a conversation with anybody just oh, taking, you just pictures, just shoot taking it. pictures in. Okay, tell us a bit about uh, your work. I, I can see you have some new works yeah. already. Tell us about what you do. At the moment, I'm very much into documenting Nigeria. I don't want to say documentary. Okay. Documenting Nigeria. Uh, I've taken it as a personal project. You already have some work done on Nigeria. You yeah. visited how many states I've written, already? I've visited all the states, 774 local governments. And documented many. Every, everything. And at the moment, I have over 4 million images on Nigeria. And having said that, I'm going back to each of the states again to have a comprehensive images. As of today, I have about four books on, I mean, four states under my wing. There is nothing you will mention in River State, Lagos State, Ogun State, Boronu State. Rivers. Rivers, Ogun, Lagos, and Boronu that I don't have. Okay. Everything, landmark, historical, monuments, everything I've captured. Of course, things are changing. The landscape is changing as well. Lagos, State most, Lagos and Ogun, most especially. Now, what would be, um, which of these states, rather, would you say was your favorite uh, pictorially? Boronu State. Why is that? Boronu State, the appellation is the home of peace. Before Boko Haram, if I'm not living in Lagos or Abuja, I will live in my degree. You, I'm, I'm thinking you're the first person to say that ever. Because Boronu State is just too beautiful. Probably because I grew up in the South, going to Boronu State was just something else. Because as far as the high could see, pure sand, desert. So it's quite interesting. And the people are very reception, you know, receptive. And life there is very peaceful. You don't have the religious fundamentalism of what you have in the Northwest. The North is a bit mix of Christians and Muslims. And in Boronu State, they are canaries. So probably their cultural orientation is quite different from the rest of the country. And not just that alone, if you're in Boronu State, you are more likely to be an international trader because it's bounding Chad, Niger, and Cameroon. I'm sure a lot of persons didn't know that until today. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. All right, let's, let's talk about photography in Nigeria. We'll, we'll get back to some of your works in a bit. Where are we? How far have we come? And where do you see us going? In the Nigeria of today, I would say we've not started. Really? Yeah, no, we've not started anything on photography at the moment. And I see myself with the likes of uh, Kelechi Amadi, uh, Don Baba, oh my God, I've forgotten his name now, the man of the Niger Delta, one of the best documentary photographer ever in Nigeria. He knows the Niger Delta in and out. I will remember his name. In the, in course, the course of the conversation. Of this year. Okay. And um, I I'll see ourselves at John the Baptist, the foreigners. Uh, why? Because the guy that came after us, or the generation before us, do not have that kind of education they see them as T-boys or things like that. So the respectability, George Oshodi. Okay, yeah, George, George Oshodi, okay. Yeah. And, you know, so the generation before us do not have a very good foundation for us, with the exception of uh, three people, uh, Uncle Sumis Matt Cole, who studied in California. Then you have the wartime photographer, 
Peter Obi. And there is someone who is a living legend. And people hardly talked about him, which is really sad. Who is this person? Cornelius Oyemade. He's in his 80s now. And of course, Jackie Phillips passed away. He's into portraiture. You know, because photography is like medicine. Everybody has his area of specialty. Specialty, yes. You know, and um, the future is bright because the younger ones are well educated. Unfortunately, Aushi Polytechnic has built the cat in training photography. Before Aushi Polytechnic, everybody thinks photography is portraiture mm. and social photography weddings and the rest of that. So how are you coping? I asked the same question of your colleague Kelechi when he was uh, with us. Um, how are you coping with the digitization of everything? Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody's a photographer. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. You know, all this picture sharing platform. How has it affected photography as you know it? Making a comparison of the old days and today. In terms of creativity, uh, we are not getting better photographers today because even your mobile phones will take pictures that you will just drop your jaw. In a way, for the, uh, digitalization is killing the profession. And uh, that is the more reason you are seeing more and more poorer photographers because a lot of companies are doing things themselves in terms of advertisement because you can use your mobile phone to do videos, you can use it to take pictures, post it on Instagram. You don't need huge uh, megapixels to take pictures these days or post on social media for you to make sales because that is where the money is. Fashion and advertisement. That is where you make the bulk of money in photography. So in the absence of that, where will you make money from? Because social photography is not something you can rely on because if you don't work tomorrow, the next tomorrow, you are dead. Yeah, well, but let you seem to share a different opinion when it comes to the effect of digitalization on photography today. He, he seems to believe that it has actually amplified the quality of work that real photographers like yourself do. No, not the camera itself. Okay. It is post-production. Okay. Post-production is easier because you have computers who are fast, which are faster and Lots of softwares are in the market that you can use to manipulate images. In those days, pre-1990, virtually everything is manual. You need to buy different films if you are going into the field, ISO from 100 to 800. But these days, with just one tool, you can change your ISO from 50, even 25 ISO to 6400 to, take, to shoot. But in those days, those things are not there. One is for you to shoot. And the other thing is post-production. So in post-production, a lot of things do. It's just like video when you are editing, you can add a lot of effects and stuff. Yes. So digitalization has, has enhanced that. But in terms of the quality of work that has been produced through the camera, not much. The, the, the best pictures ever were all taken on manuals. And today, a lot of professionals in Europe and North America are going back to, to films. Long term, what will be the effect on this, on photography as we know it? Um, there is a saying that you have to change with time. Nothing is constant. Uh, what will happen is, even though when photography came, artists in those days said, oh, it's going to kill your business. Because now you can get an instant picture instead of sitting down for hours for someone to paint you. Uh, it can only get better, more people will be drawn into it, but there will be less and less photographers in court. Because if you have your mobile phone and you can take very fantastic pictures, what's the point of going to the studio to photograph, to take pictures with your family? Because you can as well, a two, three year old can now take pictures. Tell us about this book that you have. Uh, and that is the beauty of going beyond the lens. My take is you have to go beyond the lens. This is Yoruba Proverbs. Oh. And since the history, since the creation, or since the existence of the Yoruba race, nobody has ever produced this. Really? Because now I'm taking pictures to illustrate a proverb 
what you usually see before now are illustrations. But this takes a lot of depth, a lot of thinking for you to see an image and now adapt it. You see photography, but in another way. I mean, if you are not Yoruba, or even if you are Yoruba, you see the picture, you, you read the proverb, the translation. It's much easier for you to go with. Rather I always than wanted saying, to learn Yoruba language. Uh, it's just <laughs> I wanted to learn the Osa and Ibo too. So I won't be lost wherever I find myself in Nigeria. True. And then you, you find Ogun State as well. Oh. All right, so this is a snapshot of Ogun State. There's another one that I'm working on, which is very comprehensive, about 500 pages. So whatever you're looking for in Ogun State will be in that book. Pictorially, this is just pictures, and it tells a bit of story on the state itself. Okay. So what are we expecting? You, you, you alluded to a lot of work in the pipeline. You still want to amplify what you've done in states across the country. So let's say in the next um, couple of years, what should we be expecting from you? Uh, you should be getting more states, and I'm working on Nigeria 3.0, which will be the end of the 1.0, 2.0 series. Uh, it's going to weigh about 50 kg, just like a bag of cement, and every local government in this country will feature in that book. The reason is, if we don't advertise ourselves, Nobody is going to advertise us. Is there support from government? And how do you manage it with family life? Because you practically have to be somewhere at every time. Um, I've been very lucky all my life. Some of my very deep religious friends would say I'm blessed. Uh, to have a wife that understands me, that's what I do. I don't have any other business. I'm useless once you take me out of photography. Uh, but God has been very kind to me. It's not as difficult as people think it is. Because I might go away for a month, for two months, then for the rest of the, because I only work once a year, for the rest of the year, I'm home. What's the market, rather, for these? Do you have people really patronizing um, your work once it is completed? Like I said, God has been very kind to me. All my books have all been sold out. And as a rule, I don't reprint. OK, why is that? Uh, it's a work of art. It's not biscuits that you just buy, run out, go to the factory and reproduce. So you'll be lucky to have a part of me with you because a lot of thinking has gone into it. I do the design everything by myself. I have people to edit. You know, it, it's not your run of the mill to say, okay, I self-publish as well. You know, so it's something I really handled personally. All my books has always been sold out. Post COVID-19, what kind of pictures do you see um, you would be taking? Uh, I started on a documentary because we had similar experience between 1918 and 1920. I've read a lot about it, just text, but no images, aside from the one from Spain in a big hospital, grainy black and white pictures. I've taken some images of Lagos that it, will never, it might never happen again in another 100 years. That you see Lagos as empty, as you, nobody, it, it's just unbelievable. And I hope to go back to the same spot, same time, and just document that. So in another 100 years, when we are long gone, those are the images that people will see that, oh, at this point in time when they have coronavirus in the year 2020, this is, uh, this is how the city looked like then, you know? And um, for me, I'm just trying to document our civilization because at the end of the day, I'm taking pictures today. Tomorrow is no longer a picture. It's history. It's now a document that you can use in a court of law. It's history and you cannot rewrite it. Exactly. Thank you very much for all that you do and we look forward to all the beautiful things to come. Thank you for having me. I'm really grateful. <laughs>